What is voice over IP? Well, fancy vibrations, really. Have you ever seen one of those sci-fi space movies where a group of astronauts get shot up into space, usually to fight some aliens or go to a space station or something like that? Every sci-fi space movie has the scene where one of the unfortunate astronauts hits the wrong button or gets trapped by an alien or something and gets shot out of the side of the space station into the empty atmosphere. If the, if the movie is being accurate, what you see is this unfortunate astronaut going, ha, ha, he's, he's yelling, but there's no sound. He's completely silent. Why? Because there's no air in space, and really all sound is, is vibrations. And that's what they figured out in the 16th century. 16th century, the tin can string idea came out that you built when you were kids, where you speak into one end of a cup or a can that's tied to some string. It vibrates to the bottom of the cup, vibrates the string, and that vibration travels all the way to the other cup, and you can hear them. Well, somebody took that idea a little bit further and created the analog phone that said, you know what, that can only go so far, maybe a hundred feet or so. So let's use, instead of vibrations of a string, let's use electric signals, meaning I'm going to use the properties of electricity. And you've probably seen things like this. As you're speaking, your phone is being, or your phone, your, your voice is being converted to electric signal. And the phone at the other end says, oh, okay, well, I see based on that frequency of electricity, I'm going to play this sound and that sound. And, and it kind of puts that together. Well, the problem with analog signaling is that you only go so far with electric signal before it gets weaker and weaker and weaker. And when they have to put these amplification units in there, and that makes it strong again, but then introduces line noise, and you just can't go that far far. So, along comes the invention of the digital phone. That's where the Nyquist theory came from. And instead of using electric signals that to, to represent your voice, they use numbers. 8,000 of them a second. Isn't that amazing? So as you speak, your voice is actually put against the same kind of electric chart, but they assign a number to it. They say, okay, well, let's say you say the word cow. Cow takes about a second. There's 8,000 numbers that's going to represent the word cow. You know, maybe number 30 represents the k sound or something like that. And, and now you have digital phones. And the beauty is now that you've got these numbers, you can send them as far as you want, and you don't have any degradation of signals. That's where the PBX systems came about and so on. So voice over IP, what is it? Well, it's just taking those numbers. Here's the number 30 representing the k sound of the word cow and putting TCP IP headers on it to where I, I say, well, here's a source IP address of one device and here's a destination IP address of another device. That's it. So now I'm taking 8,000 numbers a second and sending them over the internet or some kind of data network uh, with little TCP IP headers on it saying this is the source device, maybe an IP phone, and this is the destination device, maybe it's a computer. So you might say, well, if that's it, if that's all we're really doing is taking these fancy vibrations uh, that we call sound, converting them into numbers that represent the sound, and sending them across a network, why all the hoopla about voice over IP? Ah, that's another question. Why voice over IP is what you're asking at that point. Well, we've got some time. Let's squeeze it in here. The reason why we do voice over IP is because we can be more efficient. So first off, instead of sending 8,000 numbers a second, we can use different codecs. Now, there are some codecs that, and the codec, by the way, stands for coder decoder. There are some codecs that use the same old 8,000 numbers a second and squeeze them all into packets. And, that, you know, that's like a G.711 codec, most popular codec that's out there. But there's other ones like, say, G729 that smoosh it down so I can be more efficient than I was back in the day. I mean, think about it. I say the word cow and it takes a second. Do I really need 8,000 numbers to do that? I mean, wouldn't most of those 8,000 numbers be the same number if I'm just saying the word cow? So we can be more efficient with voice over IP. Second off, you get a single cabling infrastructure. Instead of having to run separate wires for your analog phones or your digital phones and have a totally different set of staff that manages those wires, benefit number two. Uh, now we have Ethernet cables, the same cables we use for our computers that we plug in here. We have the same IT department that's now able to manage the phones as well. We're using well-known protocols like TCP IP that everybody knows, everybody loves to do this, so it becomes a lot more compact
compatible so I don't have to have, you know, for instance, Cisco phones. I could have other vendors' phones. It's kind of like I have Dell laptops, Apple laptops. They all communicate together because they all use TCP IP. You can combine the internet connection and your voice all on one, can one line. There's just a, a huge number of benefits, but in a nutshell, that's what voice over IP is. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.